4-2-3-1 custom tactics YouTube. What I play with the 4-2-3-1. And believe you me, YouTube, right? The 4-2-3-1 is back. So I do play 40, 48 or 47 with. I've kind of gone with 47 now. But before we get started, guys, if you want to drop a like on today's video for me, drop a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button to my channel and hit that bell so you do get a notification every time I do drop a brand new video. Also, check out loot1977.com. The link to his website down in the description below. Use the code WOLF20 at the checkout. I'm wearing Loot's clothes right now. 20% off absolutely everything on the website. So make sure you check it out. So, 4231 YouTube is back. I play balance on the defensive style, okay? Pressure on heavy touch and pressed after possession loss are definitely a viable option. But I feel like as the game's gone on now, balance is just the way to go. Balanced. And what balance does say is a balanced style where your team presses the ball to the midfield of the pitch and your team shape is neutral. So it's kind of like not too defensive, but also not too attacking at the same time. Like I always say with my custom tactics YouTube, I like to find the happy medium G spot. And balanced is the happy medium G spot. The 47 width. Width says, adjust your defensive team shape to be balanced. You may find that one-on-one -on -one situations are more common when you don't have the ball. I like 47, man. 47 is just what works for me. It's not too narrow, not too wide. Again, in that happy medium G spot when it comes to custom tactics, that's what I like. The depth now, YouTube. This is where it has changed a little bit. Because we are playing the 4-2-3-1, and I do have two CDMs, I do now play 57 depth. The reason for that is... A lot of formations, you'll have two centre mids, for example, like the 3-4-1-2 video that I did, the 4-4-2, which is very effective this year, the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, or the 4-3-1-2 narrow, the rule centre mids, or just one CDM. But when you do then use the 4-2-3-1, you do have two CDMs, YouTube. So that allows you to have a little bit more leeway in terms of putting your team up the pitch. So the two CDMs, rather than being centre mids, means they will drop more naturally anyway. So because of that, I've now up my depth to 57. If you do struggle defensively though, YouTube, I would definitely recommend lowering the depth probably around to like a 50, 53, 52 kind of thing. Again, we like to find the happy medium G spot, so that's what I use. The offense, YouTube. This is where it gets interesting, all right? I do play balanced. Balanced means that this tactic is used for a balanced team that maintains its formation. Players will support and make runs when they think it's the right time to do so. So I'm putting the, the I don't know what the word is, but I'm putting the initiative on my AI. If they think that they can make a run going forward, they will make a run. If they don't think they can make it, they won't make it. So again, happy medium G spot. Long ball is definitely a viable option. The team will make runs for long balls into space behind the opposing back line or up to a target man. Strikers who are fast with a good attacking positioning attribute are the best of this tactic. But having played a million games on this FIFA YouTube, well, not a million, but having played loads and loads and loads of games on this FIFA YouTube, balance is the way to go. And this is where it gets interesting. Direct passing is back, baby. You would have seen it on my last video, my 4 triple two. The direct passing is back, YouTube. It is well and truly back. It's back better than ever, if I'm being honest. I find it super overpowered. I don't know whether they've done a soft patch on it. You know me, I've always been a big direct passing kind of guy. But I feel like for a couple of la for like the last month or so, direct passing has been nerfed into the ground, but it's back. It's bad. I don't know whether they soft patch it or what, but it is back. Direct passing means that once the team enters the attacking zone with possession player, with possession, players will create chances by making runs for passes into space behind the opposing back line. Strikers who are fast with a good attack positioning attribute are the best of this tactics. This means that your your team will likely get in behind. So very, very, very overpowered like that. The width YouTube 53 again. Not too wide, not too narrow. I, like I constantly say YouTube with my custom tactics, I like to find my happy medium G spot. That's what I like to find. Once I find my happy medium G spot, I'm living life. You know what I'm saying? So there it is. Players in the box. This is where it gets interesting, YouTube, okay? I'm now gone to six. I used to be a big believer of seven. I used to play seven a lot. If you'd have seen my previous videos, you would have seen it will be seven, seven, seven all the time. But now, I just find six to be a little bit better. I find I create more opportunities with six. Again, if you do struggle defensively, YouTube, I would probably recommend just playing on five. You're not going to notice too much of a difference between five and six. Excuse me, but it might just help you out defensively. So six is the way to go. And corners and free kicks, YouTube. If you're going to take anything, and I mean absolutely anything from this video, lower the corners and free kicks down from three and three to two and two. It will stop you getting counter-attacked on so, so, so much with your own corners. How do I set my team up in the 4-2-3-1? I set it up like so. Rude, Hullet, and Angola Kante, of course. Two CDMs. R9 up front. 
Mbappe on the left, Messi on the right, and Ronaldo... No, Mbappe on the left, sorry. Messi in the centre, and then, of course, Timoney and Ronaldo on the right. Kante and Hullet as my two CDMs, of course. And then back four, pretty self-explanatory. It stays the same. Now, player instructions on the 4-2-3-1. Okay, I use stay central and getting behind on my striker. I never really used to use stay central that much, but it's really overpowered. Like, I I'm talking like, when you have a striker... That you want to be scoring most of the goals. So, for example, I want my R9 to be the one that's shooting the most. It's very overpowered. And if you look what it says, it stays in the central areas of the pitch. And that's what you need, YouTube. You need your striker to focus on the, the two centre-backs and not really drift too far away from that. So, that's why I use that. All three of my cams, YouTube. And this is very important, okay? All three of them are on comeback on defence and get into the box for cross. The reason that they're all on comeback on defence is because they always try and track back and support the defence. And they get into the box for cross. They will make runs into the penalty area in crossing situations. That's the key one, YouTube. The comeback on defence isn't really too needed. But having all three of them on getting to the box for cross is very important. So think about it. If you have your ram that's running down to the byline, because your lamb and your cam are on getting to the box for cross, they will all be in the box along with your striker. So kind of just simple mathematics. Nothing go, nothing too in-depth like Monday Night Football analysis with Gary Neville and all that. I, I just think... The more players you have in the box, the more likely you are to score a goal, right? It really just is that simple. And that is my thinking behind that. It works, YouTube. Just trust me, it works. Now then, I have both of my CDMs. So the first thing I do is put them both on cover centre. And the reason for that is if you read what it says, they always try and defend the central positions. And then, YouTube, that's all I have. But I know a lot of you that are watching this video probably won't be as good at FIFA as me. So you will need that little bit of defensive cover. So definitely I would recommend for you guys to put one of them on stay back while attacking. So for example, me, of course, out of Hullet and Kante, I would put Kante on stay back while attacking and leave Hullet just on completely default settings. But I like having both of them on balance. I just feel like it adds to the attacking side of the game in a 4-2-3-1. I feel like that's the biggest thing in a 4-2-3-1 is creating opportunities and scoring goals. So just having both of them on balance, I like it. Just promise me you'll give it a try, YouTube. And let me know in the comment section down below if you think that works for you as well. And then last but not least, YouTube, I put both of my fullbacks on stay back while attacking. And that is it, okay? I was trying step up. When you do put step up on, it says step up a mark opposing attacking players tighter when they are free to receive a pass. But I didn't really like it too much. So the only thing I put on my fullbacks is stay back while attacking. And then last but not least... Comes for crosses and sweeper keeper YouTube. And that right there is my updated post patch 4231 custom tactics for you guys. It does work on on new gen and old gen because I do play both. If you did enjoy this video, please, please, please make sure to drop a like on it. Drop a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button to my channel and hit that bell so you do get a notification every time I do drop a brand new video. Also, do check out Lou1977.com. The link to his website down in the description below. Use code WOLF20 at the checkout for 20% off. And also, what are we thinking of the trim, guys? Let me know. Let me know. What are you thinking of it? We rating it? Are we rating it? Let me know in the comment section down below as well. But yeah, remember guys, spread the love of positivity. PMA, positive man, I like you. Peace out. One love.